What is up you guys? Today I'm going to talk to y'all about Berkeley Gulp. Berkeley Gulp is, as we all know, any saltwater fish freak or anybody who doesn't live under a rock knows that Berkeley Gulp is one of the most effective saltwater baits for inshore fishing. But it's so expensive. So I'm going to uh, teach you guys some tips on how to use Berkeley Gulp, how to catch more fish with them, but also how you guys can maximize really uh, every time that you're using these so you're you know not wasting your money uh, buying these expensive baits left and right. So the first thing, first tip that I have for y'all is to eliminate the tail biters. That's tip number one. If you can detect certain types of baits, when you're fishing really anywhere on the eastern seaboard, um, you get tons of pinfish, bluefish, and just small fish that tear up your Berkeley Gulp. Right here, this is a swimming mullet, and you how many times do y'all see this where they bite your tail off, and then you've gotta use another one? And how many times have y'all burnt through a whole tub of these things, $20, in less than 30 minutes? So the first tip out there is how to detect the tail biters. When you're fishing a Berkeley Gulf and you feel that bite that's, that literally feels like a mini machine gun and your rod tip is just like, it's just bouncing real quick, that's a tail biter, that's a pinfish. What you wanna do is just real, real quick, about two to three feet so that uh, you get outside of that tail biters, you know, kind of area. One mistake that a lot of people make when they first start fishing Berkeley Gulf because it's such an effective bait and it attracts tons of bites, it doesn't always attract the right bite. So you do have to know how to detect. So if you know how to detect, say a flounder bite, a trout bite, or a drum bite, if that's what you're targeting, better, then you can eliminate those tail biters. So when you feel that like mini machine gun little taps on the end of your pole, that's probably not a flounder, it's probably not a trout, or it's definitely not a drum. So you so you just wanna reel it in about three feet to make sure that you guys are eliminating those tail biters. If you guys give in to that bite and you're like, oh man, that's a fish, that's a fish, then that pinfish is going to tear up your Berkeley Gulp and it's gonna leave your shrimp uh, being able to not be used or it's gonna leave you know your swimming mullet with no tail. So that's tip number one is to eliminate the tail biters. All right, tip number two is store your Berkeley Gulps correctly. Now this right here, this is a waterproof stowaway. So Berkeley Gulp, when you buy them in the tub, they come in these and you know, just like a mason jar, you can you know open them, unscrew them and screw them back on. But what I've experienced is sometimes these tubs, they don't really last that long and they are just known to develop leaks. I would recommend actually it's worth your while. This is only $15. One of these is $20. So if you lose the juice in, in here, then your Berkeley Gulp essentially becomes, uh, you can't use it anymore. So if you invest just $15 in one of these and you put the juice in here, it's waterproof, it's not gonna go anywhere. And um, then you can actually stuff all of your different Berkeley Gulps in there, the shrimp, the swimming mullet. So that's tip number two. Make sure that y'all are storing your Berkeley Gulps correctly. Okay, so tip number three. If you have a general idea of the water conditions where you're going to be fishing, then that way you don't have to buy as much Berkeley Gulp. What I mean by that is if you know that the water you're going to fish is really, really clear, or on the other side where Christy and I fish in the Outer Banks, if that water is going to be tan, tannic, it's going to be um, you know, kind of brown, then that way you know that you're going to be able to eliminate having to buy different types of colors and you can just maximize and hone in on really one or a few different types of Berkeley Gulp. All right, y'all, tip number four for Berkeley Gulp is know when it's time to change out your Berkeley Gulp. So I really cannot emphasize for those of y'all who are not too familiar with Berkeley Gulp and how effective that they are, the tail biters. The tail biters, sometimes they'll take a little chunk out of the tail of your shrimp or just a little piece of your swimming mullet. So I don't have an example on me for a swimming mullet, but sometimes they'll take like a quarter of an inch off the tail of your swimming mullet. That's okay, you can still catch fish. You don't need, like a lot of people, if they just get a little bite off of the tail of their shrimp, 
Uh, you can watch Christy and I's videos and look closely and see that a lot of the redfish that we're catching are coming from tails that have kind of like half bitten off or whatever, as long as it still has the action. Like if it bit off the tail completely, then that's when you definitely want to change that out and you do want to, um, you know, kind of throw this one away. But if it just bit off, um, you know, a small piece of that tail, then definitely still use it. All right, y'all, so going off of tip number four, tip number five is very important. And because Berkeley Gold is a more fragile bait and you're, it is susceptible to just trash fish and crabs, you know, destroying your bait, is to make sure that you're using the right hook for your Berkeley Gold. That's really going to allow you to maximize the amount of use that you get out of each Berkeley Gold. All right, so let me show you guys an example of a hook that I don't like to use for Berkeley Gold. And this right here, when you push that Berkeley Gold up, do you see how thick this is right here as opposed to this is the Strike King jig head right here? Do you see how much thicker that it is? So I like to use jig heads that aren't as crazy aggressive of a bait holder like this one. I like to go with something that's a little bit more mellow right here like this. This is the Strike King Redfish Magic. Or I also like to use these gotchas right here. So as you can see, when you catch a fish on the Berkeley Gulp, you want to be able to use that same uh, Berkeley Gulp again and again. So if you catch a fish on this one and your shrimp is moving up and down on this jig head, you're probably only gonna get one, maybe two fish out of that because of the jig head that you're using. Whereas if you use a jig head with something that's a little bit more thin and not as aggressive for a bait holder, then that's gonna allow you to maximize the amount of use that you can out of your Berkeley Gold. All right, y'all, so one last kind of extra tip for y'all is, so this juice right here inside of these jars, also the juice is in um, the bags that you buy, but really for these jars, these are great. So when you're fishing, and Christy and I, we do wade fishing, we also fish here on our boat, and let's say we make a run to another spot. So what I like to do, and just kind of a pro tip, is if you haven't caught a fish, in probably like 15 to 20 minutes this juice is just like the scent that you can buy um just kind of like the flounder pounder scent or some of those other gels that you can buy so what i like to do is actually keep this open on the nose of my boat and so every five to ten minutes i'm actually taking my bait and i'm dipping it in this juice so then that way it kind of recharges it a little bit more with that scent if uh, your berkeley gulp dries up then that's going to affect the action and you know you're not going to catch as much fish so that's kind of an extra tip there for you all right y'all so that's all i got for you guys uh hopefully those tips help you all to be more successful out there on the water with berkeley gulp and do so without breaking the bank because berkeley gulp definitely expensive bait but it is effective so hopefully that helps you guys be more successful uh, make sure to leave us a line below if you guys have anything additional that you'd like to say also subscribe to our channel for weekly almost daily fishing videos and adventures and tips all right y'all go out there and catch yourself more fish peace out